Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. So there we go. I don't know what is going on. Let me see here. We got. All right. Okay. So there we go. I don't know what is going on. Let me see. All right. Back echo there. Let me get my face off of the screen in this weird way here because this is like not working. Seriously. Okay. Guys, give me one second. I'm trying to um, get the formatting here. I don't know why it's showing me twice. I'm flying solo today and I'm not a techie person. So my husband is not here with me and he usually helps me with this stuff. So I'm glad we can hear you, but, or hear me, but I need to figure out why real quick. Give me one second, guys. Okay. That's weird. So we're just going to do a dual screen today because it might work out for the better. I'm going to show you guys a overhead and a side by side of me. Okay. So that'll work. You guys can hear me. Um, okay. Someone's saying I have two sessions running. I don't have two sessions running. I have one session running. And I can't close out the one set. I can't close out the side by side over here. You guys won't be able to hear me. So if that's what you're referring to, you won't be able to hear me. Okay, so can you see my desk and can you see me? And can you hear me? If that's a yes, then we're good. All right, I think we're good. Okay, good, we're good. All right, <laughs> yay, okay, I did it. So we're just gonna do this dual split screen thing here today. It actually might work out for the better. Sometimes happy accidents, right? Okay. Hey, everybody. Happy craft along. Um, glad to see so many of you here um, today. I'm super excited to share our sunflower craft with you. Um, it's going to be lots of fun. So if you've attended my lives before, um, you see my husband with me often or my kids, they are not here today. I am doing this completely solo. So this is my first solo live, um, which is why the gremlin, the techie gremlins came out to play because that's always how it works, right? So um, it's going to be a little extra lonely on the side of the camera today. So feel free to, you know, really engage in the chat, ask me questions, even if they have nothing to do with crafting make good conversation. Okay. All right. So um, for our craft today, we are going to be doing, I'm going to show it up here. Actually, we're going to be doing this really pretty layered sunflower mandela here. And this is one of my designs. So you can grab it in the member vault members.abbykirstencollections.com. I've pinned it right to the top for you. So it's super easy to find. Um, and this is just a really pretty craft. You could do it any time of the year, but um, really like the fall. I don't know why I, I associate sunflowers with fall a lot of the time, even though they bloom other times of the year. Um, and it's just a really fun craft to do. It's super easy for beginners. It's great to warm you up to paper crafting with your Cricut machine and um, to just get you familiar with cutting even more like intricate things with your Cricut because we all struggle with those intricate cuts, right? So um, this is going to be a really great craft for that. Okay, so let's go ahead. There's really not a lot of design space set up, but in case someone, anyone here is like brand, brand new to design space, um, I can just show you how I would like select a material setting real quick where I would upload as long as my screen's going to cooperate with me here. Hopefully it will. So let me give that a try. Um, if not, we'll get creative and we'll figure it out. So let me see. I'm going to show my screen in stream. There we go. Okay, that should work. All right, let me go over to design space here. It's going to look weird for just a second. All right, there we go. Okay, so this is um, my Mandela, my sunflower Mandela. It's uploaded in design space. So if you guys have never, ever uploaded anything in design space before, I like to give a quick little glimpse at that because I want to make sure that our beginners are not feeling completely lost. Like, okay, I want to make this, but I I don't even know how to get to this point. So let me just show you real quickly um, where you would go to bring in a file. Um, right over here on our left-hand side, this is called the design panel and you'll see a button that says upload. So it's kind of towards the bottom left-hand side. If we click on upload, you'll get another screen that looks something like this. It might vary sometimes with what they change out on imagery up here and stuff, but it'll essentially look like this. Uh, and then you'll click on upload image. And then here is where you can browse your computer 
or device to bring in your file. So once you download the Sunflower or Mandela or any SVG that you wish to bring into Design Space, navigate to that location on your computer when you click Browse, and you can bring that in, okay? I'm not going to do it since I've already brought it in, but you would bring it in there. And then once you do, you would hit OK. And let me go back here real quick. You would hit OK, and then you would select it right here under Recent Uploads and click Add to Canvas. Um, I'll add this one to Canvas just so I can show you guys one other thing real quick. I'll check the chat in just a minute in case there's questions. It's kind of hard going solo here when you don't have people to read the questions out to you. So um, with the Sunflower Mandela, there is a leaf option that has many layers as well. I'm not going to feature the leaf today just because um, it's optional and it's completely up to your preference. I'm going to show you the the sunflower. Um, but just know there is a leaf if you would like to get creative and add that on as well. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. I'm just going to delete that right there. And let me check the chat really quickly, make sure everyone's going OK. Uh, OK. All right. So back to design space here. Um, <clears throat> OK, so if we're in here, there's a couple things you can do. Really, it's your preference. First, you want to think about uh, scaling for your project. So what are you using this for? Are you using it just for fun, like just to make a layered project? Um, are you going to put it onto something specific like a card? Um, I have some other ideas I'll share with you. Maybe you could put on a wood sign. I have some other thoughts I'll share with you as we make the Sunflower Mandela. Um, and you want to think about the size. So one thing that's really important when you're working with any type of paper craft that has any measure of intricate cuts to it like this one does, you want to make sure that you're not scaling too small. Because even if we do all the other right things when it comes to cutting cardstock on our machine, um, it can still cause problems with tearing if your, your size is just too small. Your, your machine does still have limitations. It can't do, you know, a half an inch sunflower this big or something crazy like that. it can't cut that small. So um, think about your size. This is the size I'm going to be doing here today. I have done um, as small as four inches on this one, and it worked well. I don't think I'd recommend going much smaller than four inches. You might be able to get away with like three and a half or something like that, which is perfect for like the front of a card or something like that. Okay, so still lots of different ways you could use it, even if you are keeping it around three and a half, four inches. We're going to stick with this size today here. And if you want to get a visual for, you know, maybe you want to kind of get a visual for a different set of colors here, sunflowers or sunflowers, generally they're going to be yellow and brown and black. But um, <laughs> just so you know, uh, if you click on any of these layers over here, this little color swatch right here, you can change the represented color. So if you're like, oh, I plan on using a much lighter yellow and I want to get a visual of what that's going to look like, then you can adjust that here and kind of play around with that. Um, so that's really it for the setup on this, guys. It's really simple. So that's why these types of crafts are great for beginners. Super, super simple. Um, make sure you have your correct machine selected over here. I'm going to be using the Explore 3 today. Hopefully, my machines have been acting up since the Design Space update. Um, so hopefully, everything goes well there. I did cut some layers out in advance in case there's any issues. Um, I would click on, let me double check the chat real quick here just to make sure. Okay, we're looking good. All right, it's a little back and forth for me today. Um, okay, I'm going to click on the Make It button. So we're going to send this to the cut screen. We've decided on our size. We're good to go. Uh, always scale as a group. So never scale individually. Always click and drag over the whole thing and scale as a group at the corner here. This is one thing that Design Space changed recently. It was how the scaling, the bounding box looks. But if you come to any corner here, you can scale larger or smaller. Okay, put that to its original size. Also make sure you save your project, something that um, I didn't used to do in my early days of Cricut Crafting many years ago. Always save your project so you can make sure you can just open it up and um, do the project again in the future without any setup. So let's click the Make It button here. And since I'm using an Explore 3, it's asking me how am I going to load this material. Uh, if you're using an Original Maker or a um, Explorer 2, one of those other models, you may not get this pop-up. And that's fine. You can still do this craft. It's just asking you, do I plan to cut on a card mat? Am I going to cut without a mat? We're, of course, going to be cutting on a mat. So I'm going to click on mat and then click continue. Uh, if you need to change your 
size of paper, you can do that over here. So they have, you know, letter size and other options for you as well. I'm just going to leave it at the 12 by 12 default. Um, that works for me, but that is an option for you over here uh, if you need to adjust your paper sizing. Because a lot of cardstock does come in like 12 by 12. And we're going to go over supplies in just a minute as we start to get into this. I just wanted to show this as initial setup here. I'm going to connect to my Cricut machine. All right. So um, for settings, that's going to depend on what type of paper you're going to use, which we're going to cover more specifically in a second. Um, I like to mix glitter, metallic, and um, like solid papers for these mandelas because it adds an extra pop of dimension when you're mixing in different textures of paper. So you may need to do a glitter or you may, may need to do the medium card stock. Uh, you can find any of these settings by clicking on browse all settings and then plugging in the keyword at the top here. So if I'm looking for like a foil poster board, which is one of the layers I used here, I could type in foil and here is my foil poster board option. Or likewise, if we're doing you know the glitter card stock, that's available there. So that's how you find your material settings. And you'll just need to select that for whatever mat is corresponding to the material you're placing on the mat. Okay, let me stop the screen share here so we can actually go into the supplies. Because I think you guys got it. Let me hide this. Okay, there we go. I think someone asked, why does it look like this is spinning? I have a fan on above me. So it's creating a reflection with the metallic. But that kind of gives me an idea, right? Like, could we make some like spinning mandalas? That would be cool, right? Um, all right. So uh, Ermit says, I missed the first 10 minutes. Is the file from Design Space? Um, no, this is my own file. You can get it on members.abbykirstencollections.com. Um, it is free right now, so you can download it for free. Um, and then we have lots of other freebies in there, as well as um, if you're a part of our premium membership, there's loads more beyond that. Okay, so supplies. Let's talk about that next. Let me grab my items here. And... Okay, get all my stuff. It's not how I originally had it set up, so we're, we're just going to go with it. All right, so supplies. You're going to need some form of cardstock. Uh, 65 to 80 pound cardstock is best, okay? So I like to use, like, there will be, let me, let's, oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to talk to two cameras at once. Um, so this is sort of like a shimmer metallic it's kind of hard to see, but there is a bit of a metallic sheen to it. So that's one option. This is about 80 pound in weight. Um, you can use a glitter option. So I have some glitters that I'm gonna use here like that. And then we have solids and foil poster board as well. Um, as far as resources for paper, um, I have lots of resources on my blog that I recommend. Um, a couple of my favorites. I love a lot of paper at Michael's Craft Store. So they'll have um, like the Recollections brand is great. Um, and I also love the Cricut brand, this foil poster board and this glitter cardstock. These are the Cricut brand here. Um, and then I also love my new favorite. I just discovered this about a month ago. My new favorite online resource is 12 by 12 cardstock shop. Um, they are really great. They have tons of different textures, weights, sizes, tons of colors. Um, and I really like their stuff. I have, um, I believe, I believe this one is theirs. Um, and then some of the other ones I cut out here. So let me check the comments real quick here before I continue. Okay, I think we're good. All right. Um, so someone's saying that this is a strobe effect and it's hurting their head. I'll move it over here. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so next supplies we have here are for our adhesives. So we're going to be using a glue as well as um, some foam strip tape here. So this is a Barely Art um, Precision Craft glue. Uh, and this is one of my favorites, but you can use other kinds. So you can use like... Um, Tombow liquid glue is another brand you can use. You might already have a favorite brand you can use, but you just need some form of liquid glue. So we're gonna be using that. And then these 3D uh, foam tab tapes, strip tapes, they're known by like a million different names. Essentially what these are is it's tape, but it has, it's on a foam base. So it creates thickness when you add it between layers. So there's some thickness there to where when we place our layers together, it's creating dimension to it, okay? And they make these in like strips like this. They also make them 
in little dots as well, um, or squares. Um, I like using the strips, they're my favorite. I get them off of Amazon. Um, and craft stores tend to carry these as well. So you should be able to find them there. But just type in like um, 3D foam craft tape or something like that, you'll find it. It'll come up. It's that kind of keyword search result. My second screen is frozen. Uh, is my second screen frozen for anybody else? I'm seeing movement on my end. So is that the case? Yeah, that's the case. Okay, well, let's try this. Oh. Is it working now? Oh. Yep. Comes and goes. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know. It, it's this overhead camera here. I was having problems when I was setting up earlier. Okay. Um, I think I need to get an Apple adapter because it's not liking the adapter that I use. Let me double check my screen here again. Sorry, guys. Is it working now? Oh. Good now. Working. Okay. Plenty of. Nope. Frozen again. Comes and goes. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Give me just a second, guys. I'm just trying. It's frozen again. Let me stop screen sharing real quick here. See if that improves anything. Um, that might help. Okay. All right. So it looks like the this camera over here is working. So. I don't know why it's coming and going. We're gonna operate with me talking from this camera here and we're gonna try and proceed from there, okay? So I will do my best to get that to work. I don't know why it's, it's doing this. Mm. Darn it. <sighs> okay, um, I'm sorry guys. Probably all getting irritated with me. Um, yeah, no. If I remove the other screen, then the mic goes out. And I don't want the mic to go out on you guys, obviously. So we're going to operate from this screen right here. Okay, we're going to operate from this screen right here. Um, and just try and move forward. So we're going to try and move forward from this screen. So just watch me over here. Okay. Um, I don't really know why it's Doing that. Um, I'm trying different layouts real quick, guys, just to see if this will fix the problem. <sighs> Thank you all for all y'all who are being patient with me. I don't have my husband here to help me troubleshoot. Um, some people say it's working now like this. So maybe just shifting the screen is like triggering it. It might it might freeze again on us. Let's just proceed with watching me on this one over here. Okay, guys, we'll do our best. We'll do our best. Um, okay, so I'm gonna proceed with that. Hopefully if you guys can hear me and see me on this one, we can at least get, get the job done today, okay? Um, so, all right, we were talking about supplies. We covered the cardstock paper that we needed. We covered that we needed the uh, 3D foam strip tape, okay? Um, and then we covered that we needed the precision glue. I also recommend a Cricut weeding tool. It helps with getting the, um, the backs off of the tape. Um, so that helps a lot. And then you may also want to have a brayer tool to push the material to the mat. So a brayer tool can be very helpful. And then a Cricut mat, of course, for your Cricut machine, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and load this. Um, it looks like on my screen right now that things are still showing down here, but, um, oh yes. So, okay. <laughs> I'm going to pause here since someone's given me a question. Um, Martha's crafty corner. Martha's asking me what's with my Christmas decorations and 
September back here. Uh, that's because we have a very special event coming soon. Actually, we're 30 days out from it. If you guys were on my email list, you heard about it this morning. Um, for those of you who remember uh, the Cricket Craft Fest that happened in February of this year, well, you guys begged me to do another one before February of 2023. So we're doing a holiday version of the Cricket Craft Fest. And this was all decorated for my videos I was filming this week and all the workshops that are coming and all the photography I had to do for that. So we are super decorated for Christmas super early this year. Um, so that is um, my dream box behind me there that is completely decorated. So get into like the winter fall theme because it's, it's the holidays in here. <laughs> um, and I'll be sending out more information about the holiday Cricket Craft Fest coming up, which is the free event. So if you're on my email list, you'll get that information. You'll hear more about it on social media if you follow me. So just stick around. You'll hear about it. I promise we'll get the word out. So that's what that's for. All right. Okie dokie. All right. I think we're still doing okay. As of right now, it looks like it. All right. We're going to proceed. Okay. We're going to proceed. Let's do it while technology is working with me. Okay. <laughs> it's like a race against time. Okay. So I have my Cricut mat here and I'm going to load up. Let's see. Let's do a, let's do it with the foil poster board. I think I'm going to do it with the foil poster board because that's a good, like, it's a heavy option on paper, but it's also um, can be challenging to cut through sometimes. Let me see which. I'm not going to cut out all of these layers and bore you guys to death with that. I already have it cut out over here. So I'm going to cut an example layer just to show you the cutting process. Let me see here. I'm going to do what colors? Let's do one that's kind of intricate, but not. Let's do this one. That one's a good one too. Okay. I'm going to search for, I'm on my computer right now. You guys can't see it. I'm just searching for my material settings like I already showed you. Uh, there we go. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to load this. Let me get my screen back here. There we go. All right. So we're going to place this onto our Cricut mat here. Okay. And... Just place that on. Brayer tool is very helpful, especially if your mat's been used several times before. It really pushes that material to the mat. Okay, so I'm just going to get that material pushed on there with the Brayer tool. Do I need to change blades for glitter and or foil cardstock? Um, no, you don't. So fine point blade works just fine. Um, some people suggest keeping a fine point blade for like your heavier st card stocks and glitters and stuff. And then one for like your thinner papers and vinyls. Um, Cause that can sometimes extend the life if you kind of mark them for specific materials. Uh, I don't do that. I'm kind of lazy, but um, that is something you can do if you want to, but the fine point blade will cut the foil uh, poster board for you as well as the glitter card stock. So you're good to go. Uh, yep. Yeah. Thank you, Diane. All right. So I'm going to load this on my sh machine behind me here. I'm just placing this. I think you guys can see me a little bit. Let me point this down a bit for you. I'm just placing it here on my Cricut machine and pressing the double arrow flashing button here to load my mat and my fine point blade in there. So once Cricut scans the mat, then it's going to flash that play icon. It may also look like a Cricut icon as well if you're using an Explore 2 or a Maker machine. Once it starts flashing, go ahead and just press it to proceed with the cut. And we're going to let the Explore just go to town over here, okay? All right, so let's put this over here so you guys can see kind of where we're headed. And I'll help. I can get my computer out of the way of it here. I'm so scared to even move my computer. I don't want anything to disrupt us again. Okay. I'm going to move my papers over here. All right. So I'm going to be using the foam strip tapes here. Um, tape tabs, whatever you want to call them. And this is the one I've already made, but we're going to be doing this one. Uh, the first thing you need to do with this, I'm going to have that cut out and I'll show you how I'll remove it from the mat, but we'll just sort of start to get, get started with this over here while our machine's working. First thing you need to do when you cut these layers out is keep them in order. So you can always look um, at the file in Design Space that you've brought in and see what order the layers came in as to help yourself. It's kind of obvious because you see it getting like thicker as it works towards the bottom. But if you need guidance on that, just take a look at the actual file itself. 
Um, so then you also need to line things up. So this takes just a couple minutes. I tried to get everything aligned beforehand so you guys aren't bored to death watching me try to align it, but get everything aligned, check your alignment. Um, and this one's good in a line. So for this part here, the center of our sunflower, there's two layers. This is, I cut in a um, glitter black and this was like a metallic dark brown. Um, so I'm gonna add a little bit of glue for this piece here and try to keep the alignment straight in my head. This is gonna be my Barely Art Precision Craft glue here. And I'm gonna add this, make sure it's coming out. Okay, we're good. All right, so I love this Barely Art Precision Craft glue because the tip is so tiny. When you're working with these intricate pieces, you can come in here and just like dot the glue as you need to. It's probably really even hard to see on camera because it's so precise, but it's excellent for paper crafts. There's also Tombow liquid glue, um, which is great. It has a precision tip as well. Um, so that's another brand that's really good. And I know there's lots of other uh, craft glue brands out there as well. Um, Looks like things are still sort of working okay. So thank you, Jesus. Let's hope that we make it through the end. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm just dotting the glue in here for this piece. I would not use the foam strip tape on this because there's really nowhere to stick it where we wouldn't see it through. So for this part, we're using glue, okay? And then I'm gonna flip this over and it's gonna dry clear. So don't worry when it gets kind of all over the place as you're trying to align it. It's okay, it'll dry clear, you won't be able to see it. And for me, this is actually a glue that dries clear. You know the glues that like say they're gonna dry clear, they don't dry clear, this one actually dries clear. <laughs> so no worries there on that. You can actually kind of blot it off and then you won't even see it. Okay, there we go. So there's that part. Let me unload our mat here and I'll show you how I'll remove, how I remove all of my cardstock, foil cardstock and glitter cardstock um, from a Cricut mat. So I'm gonna put this over here real quick. I'm gonna get my mat. Okay, we just pressed the double arrow flashing button to unload our Cricut mat here, okay? Let me put this over here. All right, so anytime that we, make sure there's no questions. I'm in Colorado and my glue always seems to dry out. Any tips? Well, that would depend on the glue. I would have to know the brand of the glue of that. Um, it could just be the brand. Um, is it, you know, how old is, how old is the glue? Um, always make sure you're never leaving your glue tip like exposed like this. Um, with the precision, this Barely Art Precision Glue, it comes with like sort of a sewing pin needle that you put right in the tip when you're not using it. And it keeps all of that, I can't even get it in there, it's so tiny. It keeps all that dryness out and just making sure it's in a really good seal. You could try also putting it in like a plastic bag maybe um, to like seal it from air and stuff like that. Just get all the air out of it and like put it in a plastic bag when you're not using it. It could extend the life of the glue. That would just be my guess. Um, all right, so let's um, flip this over. Flipping your mat over is the best way to remove materials from your Cricut mat because a lot of times when we go to remove our materials, um, we end up curling them if we try and remove them with the mat facing up. So always put your mat face down and then think of rolling the mat away from the material. So I'll just press with my hand here, go nice and slow. You don't wanna crease the mat cause then it'll deform it or break it. You just want it to be a gentle roll. All right, there we go. Let's over here, this out, this over. Okay, so there is our cut out of our foil poster board with the fine point blade. Um, and that did really well on that setting. So this is the Cricut foil poster board, um, but I've used other metallics and foil poster boards that are not Cricut brand and they work well as well. So um, give that a try if you wanna try that. Glitter cardstock, use the glitter cardstock setting. 65 to 80 pound cardstock, use the medium cardstock setting for this. You keep freezing and the video keeps repeating yourself. 
Okay. Um, Okay, it seems to be working for this particular moment. So I'm just gonna keep going here, okay? Um, from what I'm seeing on my screen. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to um, layering this actual sunflower here. We did our center. Um, okay, so some of you are saying it's freezing, some of you are saying it's not freezing. Um, if you have open, like a lot of open tabs and stuff on your device, you're watching us on the phone, try closing those out. Sometimes it can be a bandwidth that you, it may not be that at all, it's probably me, but. Sometimes that can be the case. So just a suggestion. All right, so getting everything aligned here is really key. Um, I'm gonna start by flipping these layers over here. Um, I'm gonna start by flipping these layers over here and then you wanna check your alignment. So with this sunflower, it can sometimes take a few minutes to get things aligned. It's not perfectly perpendicular, okay? So you're gonna have to take a minute to figure out the alignment. Once you figure that out, it can be helpful to just take a pencil or a pen and just put a dot on the back so that you know where those two ends are going to meet together to align and you're not trying to figure that out again once you flip it over to put the tape on. So just a little extra sanity saving tip for you there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and flip this one like this and we're going to take our foam strip tape here. Again, you can use the dots or the... Um, I'm sorry, I'm watching my phone over here to make sure everything's doing okay. I'm watching four screens right now. This is really interesting. All right, so we're going to put our strip tape here. I like the strip tape because um, you can mold it like this. Whereas if you're trying to do like the dots, you have to like stick and they work, but I like the strips. That's just my preference. Um, Amazon is where I got these. I think craft stores sell them as well. So should be good. Y'all are seeing my lovely assistant, Susan, in the comments there. She is here helping me. She lets me know when things are frozen or <laughs> we're having tech problems. She's going to answer questions, drop in links. So shout out to her. She is like my second favorite person in the whole wide world. Um, my first is my husband. Well, I guess my husband and my kids. You'd be, you'd be like number four then. But that's still pretty high up on the totem pole there. Just saying. <laughs> All right, so we've added our foam strips on there. I'm gonna go ahead and take my weeding tool to remove the backs here. You can pick at it with your fingers if you want to, um, but I find the weeding tool is much easier to just pick at it and pull it up like that. So most of us who own a Cricut machine have a weeding tool on hand, so it's not a big deal. Okay. Ink. I still see motion on my other screen over here. So I think we're not frozen for the moment and that's good. All right, there we go. All right, so now we got this. I have my little pen dot there to help me remember where my alignment was. So that's why it can be helpful to put that on the back. You won't see it when you flip it to put it together, but a pen or pencil dot can help you <laughs> kind of keep your sanity there with the alignment. So I'm just going to come in here and lay this down. And that is our first layer on there. <laughs> I'm reading some of the comments. <laughs> um, okay, so next layer, you're just going to repeat. This is why I, I always recommend like these types of paper crafts for beginners because um, the, the Cricut really does the heavy lifting for you. And you can get from you can get comfortable cutting paper out intricate cuts with your cardstock another thing okay another thing i didn't say when i was in the settings let me say this real quick if your paper is tearing and let's say you're using like a 65 to 80 pound cardstock um try the setting cardstock for intricate cuts search that in the browse materials area that one almost always solves that problem make sure your blade is clean and fresh and hopefully relatively new and is still cutting well make sure you have a fresh clean mat and there's not a bunch of debris on your mat those are some other tips i just want to give you when cutting cardstock that could have intricate cuts to it so i didn't cover that earlier i just want to say that real quick okie dokie all right moving on with this we're going to add our foam strips again so very easy i think these are fun too because um 
you could cut these out and then have like kids and other people help you assemble them. Um, so it could be something really fun to do as like a group craft or a family craft. Um, and you'll just have to have your Cricut do the cutting and then everyone can assemble them together. So I think that could be really fun. I'm gonna trim these down a little bit more here. And I'm just gonna place these randomly. You don't have to like cover the entire area with tape. You just want it to be well supported so that there's no areas that are like kind of not supported to where the, the design is not even, evenly held up, I guess you could say. Um, in general, just something kind of randomly placed is gonna do the job fine, just like this. I mean, it doesn't really look like there's any rhyme or reason to it, but you'll see it does the job just fine. Okay, I think we're doing okay so far. Let me check. Hi, everybody. Oh, you guys are being so sweet. Thank you guys for being so patient with me. I feel like one out of every three lives I do, there is some sort of technological issue. The last one, smooth as butter, no issue whatsoever. One before that, I think we had like five minutes of something and then the rest of the time it was fine. And then the one before that, it was a complete chaotic mess. So I don't know what's going on, but thank you guys for joining me and bearing with me through all of this. I hope you enjoy our crafting time together. Okay, so this one here is the next one. Again, I sort of marked it at the top here with a little pen dot so that I could take a look and make sure I'm getting it aligned correctly. Yeah, there we go. All right, that's maybe slightly off, but not too bad, you know. And then right here, I can see I didn't get, like this is kind of flopping on me. So I would put a little bit of tape in there. I should have added some tape there. Sometimes you can assess with certain designs where the tape should go better after you flip it over. So that can be helpful. So in this case, I'm doing that. Where I'm kind of adding it as an afterthought. And we'll still get there. Oh my gosh. So my husband's not here today because he's visiting his dad for um, his birthday. And they live in Daytona. So he took the kids for a day to see them. And then I just didn't want to delay another live. So I stayed here to do the live with y'all, um, but it's good. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> I don't think I'll do this again if I can avoid it. I need my tech person here. All right. All right, cool. So we're doing good. Next layer here. Here we go. We got two more layers to add. Again, same thing. You can see how like repetitive and easy this is. I actually have quite a few of the um, layered style paper Mandela crafts on the blog. I have a, a hummingbird. I can show you that in a minute. Um, I think Susan already mentioned it earlier. I have a hummingbird. I have um, a pumpkin, a fall leaf, a turkey, a rainbow. I'm trying to think what else. I know there's probably a couple others I'm forgetting. You reach a point as a craft blogger, you can't even remember your own content anymore. Um, let me just say, I'm sure there's some fellow business owners on here who can probably relate with that in some way or another. And you're like, oh yeah. Or I, I can tell you there's been times I've had to go back and watch my own tutorials because I can't remember how to do something. That is, the struggle is real. Let me just say. It's like information overload, you know. All right. I think we got this one here. Do you know? Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to use my weeding tool again here. And I did use a little, I put two pen dots on this one. I must've gotten it wrong. Um, I did use a pen to mark the backs of these to help myself with the alignment. I would actually say use a pencil because sometimes with certain papers, the pen dot can sort of weed a little. So I didn't have a pencil. I used a pen. Should have gone downstairs and found one from my kid's homework station, but I was lazy, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see your all's project. You're all saying you're really excited to make it. So make sure you tag me. Um, you can join our Facebook group if you're not part of our Facebook group yet. It's um, uh, Crafters and Cricket Lovers or something like that. One of those times I have to go back and look at something because I can't remember everything. Uh, I'm sure Susan will drop the link in the comments in a minute there. But if you make this, um, post it in our group, tag me in it. Um, I would love to see it. It's, it's the highlight of being a craft business owner is getting to see other people create their own take on things. So I would love to see that. All right. 
So looking at my dots here, I think, I think this one goes here, but I did make two dots. So we're just gonna go with it, see if that works. Yeah, there we go. All right, it's kind of looking really pretty now. Like when you get the glitter and the metallic in there, it really like, it just adds even that much more dimension because of the tech, different textures. All right, so let's do our very last one here. Sunflowers are in full bloom in Chattanooga, Tennessee. They're beautiful. Yeah, I bet. Um, we have a sunflower. We have a, it's a blueberry farm here um, out in Claremont and they do sunflower picking every year. I've only seen sunflowers there. I've never seen them in like um, Chattanooga, Tennessee or other states that might, you know, get them more naturally bloomed at certain seasons during the year. Um, but I bet those are beautiful. I love when you can go by and just see these large sunflower fields. Um, I bet that's beautiful. So I tried growing sunflowers once when I was a kid. Um, I'm not sure if it would have worked out or not because a hurricane came through. I'm, I'm in Florida. So a hurricane came through and uprooted them before they actually were able to bloom. <laughs> um, so I don't know if that would have worked out or not. I can tell you I don't have a green thumb. Most people might think, oh, she has a green thumb because she's such a creative person or she's great at crafting paper flowers or other things. I don't have a green thumb. I kill everything. But I will say, um, my son on Mother's Day in May brought me home a hand-painted pot from school, and the teachers had put flowers in it, um, like the, I think it's like the impatience flowers or something like that, or patience, whatever they're called. Um, and I've managed to keep it alive. I've actually gotten like three blooms out of it, put it by my window, and... Um, it doesn't look like it's necessarily thriving, I would say, but it is blooming and I've managed to keep it alive for these like three, four solid months. So I'm kind of proud of myself because I think that's a record for me, um, <laughs> but I do not naturally have a green thumb. No, for sure. I do not. Okay. Looks like we're doing okay here. I'm going to get this off and I'll check the comments if you guys have any questions in just a second here. There we go. These old pieces. So downside of working with the, the foam strips is the little backings get everywhere. So just plan to have a dustpan and broom on hand. I'm one of those people that when it's time to craft, I craft, I make a mess, I get the floor covered, and then we sweep at the end. Because stopping to put everything in a trash can, like put this in a trash can, put the next piece in a trash can, like it would take like 20 times longer to do a craft, right? So hopefully I'm not the only one there. I don't think I am, but... <laughs> All right, so here we go. Let's see how that goes. Actually, this is kind of showing there a little. Okay, okay, for my little reference dot there, it looks like these two. Get that sort of a line. And don't worry about perfection, okay? So it's okay if it's not perfect. Nobody's crafts are perfect. No sunflower in nature is perfect. Imperfection is sometimes what makes it look even more perfect. It's that way with a lot of things. Okay, there we go. All right, so that was our last big layer there. So we have one, two, three, four, five total layers there. Everything looks like it's still working okay. So we have five total layers there and now we'll add the center. So this is the part we combined with glue. You can glue it directly on if you like. I do like to add the foam strips just to give it that extra bit of a, a lift um, and a, a little extra pop. So I'm gonna just add these directly on here because I know where it's gonna cover. Just like that and Okay, so sometimes notice my, my, my tape isn't sticking there. If you're using the glitter, sometimes you really have to like really give it a press to the glitter paper before it'll stick. And then it goes, because sometimes the glitter is like, no, I don't want to stick, but it'll stick, don't worry. And you can always use glue for this. So if you're like, I don't want to work with the foam strip tapes, just layer it with glue. You won't have as much dimension to it, but it'll still be a beautiful layered craft. So absolutely, you can do that. There's no really right direction for this part, just take a look at where you think it looks best to your eye and go ahead and press it on, just like that. 
Okay, so there we go. That turned out pretty good. I think we made it. I think the camera's still working. <laughs> All right, so I want to actually want to show you guys a couple ideas on how you can use these because um, I get the question a lot, like, how do you use some of these things? Um, practical applications for gift ideas or things like that. So one way you can use them is like on a wood sign. Um, I mean, this one here I made two years ago. Um, so you can see it holds up rather well. I made this two years ago and I made, you have to look at this camera here. I made this sign. I bought this long sign here at, um, I think it was Joann's or one of those stores. And I bought these wood letters and I glued them on uh, with Gorilla Glue to make sure that they were like not gonna go anywhere. And then here I added um, some Velcro dots and I put the matching Velcro dots on the back of the mandala here. And I'm able to put on to my sign here, line them up correctly, put onto my sign there, my um, pretty Mandela, and it acts as like a letter and it's decorative. And then what I do is I have, oh, that's another one I have. I have a poinsettia um, Mandela as well. So at Christmas time, I change it out and I put the poinsettia on. And then like in January, I'll put on a snowflake. I have a snowflake one as well. So I'll put the snowflake one on. And then I'm sure I have some other ones I could do with that as well. So you can change this out as like a seasonal home sign um, with the little Velcro dots. So just look for like Velcro dots on like Amazon or at craft stores. And you can put one side of the Velcro dot onto the mandala and the other side onto your sign here. And then you can change them. Um, Oh, sorry, different text message. Um, so you can change them out. So that's one practical way to use this. I've been having, I've hung this in my home for like the last two and a half years um, and it still looks great. So it's a really fun um, idea. <laughs> oh, gee, I'm 30 minutes away from Claremont. I uh, just found your channel now. Oh, thanks guys. Yeah, so um, this is one practical application. Um, let me actually get this on properly here. There we go. Okay, so this is one practical application for um, a mandala. And then you can also do things like, I actually don't have a lot of other examples, but you could use them for like gift tags. So if you wanted to, maybe before you cut this out in design space, you could slice a little hole out of it using the slice tool and you could string a ribbon through it and then write your recipient's name on the back of it here. And you could use it as a gift tag or just a gift box topper if you want to just put it on top of a gift box. Um, you could also do like wood si like small wood signs. So if you wanted to put this on like, like this on a wood sign and then maybe you have some sort of phrase and vinyl you want to apply here, then you could definitely do that. Let me show you. I'm going to step out of the camera real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm going to show you my um, hummingbird here where I did that. So this is my hummingbird design here, and it's just a wood sign to put it on. And um, it makes a really beautiful piece of home decor. Uh, and you can you know, give it as a gift or something like that as well and just personalize it in a million different ways with colors and, and text and stuff like that. Um, so those are some practical ways to use it. Um, you can also put them on cards if you would like. Um, I, I haven't actually made an example of it, but I have one prepped. It's not put together. I'll just show you guys for inspiration. Um, grab it real quick here. So for inspiration here, this is not assembled yet, um, but you could put a mandala on a card. Let me put this over here. You could put the mandala on a card like this. Um, and I'm gonna probably actually throw this card template up in the bowl in the next week or so. Um, so you guys can get it too. But this would be another way you could use it is on an actual card for somebody. Um, so that's another idea. Um, let me take a look in the comments here and see if I have any questions. Um, it wasn't too hard of a craft to put together. It went kind of smoothly. Can you put the home sign outside or does it need to stay in a sheltered area? Yeah, because it's paper, I would recommend keeping it indoors for sure. Um, I would not, I would not put that outside, unfortunately. Um, maybe if you wanted to do it like for a short period of time for like some sort of gathering or something and you know it's not raining or anything like that maybe you don't live in a super humid client you could put it out there for a few hours for some sort of decoration but I wouldn't put it outside like a front door for an everyday kind of thing I put mine right on the inside of my front door or like in the entrance area of my house um, <clears throat> so that is an option for you as well 
Oh yes, a shadow box. Absolutely. You could definitely do shadow boxes. Um, I haven't actually, I don't think I have an example. Well, I did have an example, but I put it away. I don't have it out. I do have one example of a shadow box. Um, but yes, shadow boxes are a great idea for layer crafts as well. Any ideas for Thanksgiving dinner decorations? Hmm, let me think. So if you wanted to use like the sunflower, I have a turkey and a fall leaf on the blog as well. So if you're wanting like um, a layered paper craft, I have those um, in the member vault that you can get as well. So you could apply those. You could put these in a flower arrangement. Like I know that sounds funny, but let's say you have fresh flowers and you want to get some of those floral picks and you sort of set it in there as an additional decoration for like the centerpiece of a table. You could also use these as like place cards if you wanted to. Um, you could get creative to where maybe this is the base of the place card and you write the recipient's name on another piece of paper. Or maybe you cut it out in like a little ribbon piece or banner and you set it on top of this and then this sets on a plate and that's a place card holder. So that could be a way that you could do something like that for Thanksgiving or the holidays and just use you know, different types of layered crafts for that concept. Um, that could be one way. I was actually thinking this would be a lot of work. So this is kind of, it's not something I would do. But if you wanted to get really fancy with your tablescape and you wanted to do smaller ones like this, this is not put together. But if you wanted to do smaller ones, you could get like some cardstock and you could turn them into like fancy napkin rings as well. So again, that would be kind of a lot of work, but an idea, you know, you could explore that idea for sure. Let me double check my comments here real quick. Uh, yep, there it is. Um, <laughs> um, thank you, Teresa. Thank you so much for sticking with me, guys. Do you have any Christmas ornaments? Let me see, oops, comments are going crazy. Um, <laughs> do you have any Christmas ornaments? or an iris background that you could fill with small items. That's a good idea. Um, I don't have anything exactly like that right now. Uh, I do have some layered Christmas ornament designs coming for the Holiday Cricut Craft Fest. I have them on my desk over here if you guys would like a preview of them. I normally wouldn't do this, but you guys are also engaged and interested. I love sharing. So let me grab them real quick. I'll show you. Okay, so these are not available right now. Okay. Um, these are going to be available for the holiday cricket craft fest coming October 3rd through the 7th. There's going to be more information coming out about it in the next couple of weeks, lots more information. So these are some layered um, ornament crafts here. I have a nutcracker. I have a Santa, a Christmas tree and a snowman. Okay. So these are not available right now. Again, but these are going to be part of the Holiday Cricut Craft Fest, one of the workshops I'm teaching. Um, so on the note of asking about like ornament designs, I don't have anything you could put something into, but I do have ornament designs coming. OK, um, and these will these will be available just to the Craft Fest for a period of time. Eventually, I will release them into our um, premium member vault. But for now, just know that they're, they're coming to you eventually. Um, let me check my comments here again real quick. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I've always been so scared of this type of craft, but you made it so easy. You're so welcome, Martha. Yeah, it's, it is, it can be scary to work with this craft because like with these types of things, they just look so complicated, right? Like, like with the hummingbird, there's so much going on there. It just looks so complicated. But once you get the right paper down, the right settings on your Cricut machine down, you practice a few times, then your machine is going to just take over the heavy lifting for you. And the rest is really easy to do. So it's really easy. So don't be afraid to give it a try. You'll, you'll love it. You'll fall in love with it. All right. Okay. Let me make sure I didn't miss any comments here. There was um, quite a few suddenly jumping in. Thank you guys for bearing with me today. I think we um, outlasted our technological problems. <laughs> I don't think I missed any other questions here, but if you're watching this as a replay, of course, feel free to leave your questions in the comments. So we're always happy to help you. Um, and I can't wait to see you guys uh, make these. Check out my other layered crafts. If you go to members.abbykirstencollections.com and you log into in your account, it's you can create an account for free. Um, and you just type in the keyword, the search Mandela, you'll see all of the ones I currently have. Um, some of them are free and then others are for our premium members, which of course you can um, become a premium member as you know, anytime you want to. Um, so I can't wait to see what you guys make. Make sure you tag me. Um, I don't see any other major questions coming through. So I'm probably going to end this here before the techie gremlins come back out to play. <laughs> so 
uh, that's it for now, I think. And um, I'll see you guys next month. So the Cricket Craft Fest is going to be, the Holiday Cricket Craft Fest is going to be the week of the 3rd through the 7th. We are going to be doing our next live the Saturday before that. So I think it's the 1st. Um, and that's going to be our next live that we do. Uh, I won't be showing any specific craft projects in that one. We're going to be going over some design space tech, some um, questions and things like that, um, and sort of kicking off our event. Um, but you'll be able to join me for that uh, next month as well. So we're 30 days out. I'm super excited. Um, and thank you guys for joining me today. Um, Y'all are saying thank you. and you, you appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you guys for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, that's, that's it for now, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and end this and feel free to watch this again and leave your questions and comments below. I will see you guys next month then. And bye for now. <laughs>